Hey guys, welcome to Blonity. First my little disclaimer, this is no financial advice, my own opinion and estimates, my estimates could be completely wrong. Don't trust, always verify, understand the numbers, be aware of scammers and you know the best how to invest your money. Please be, be aware that I'm invested in the most of these companies. Yeah, let's go, let's jump right into it. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the, about the market. Um, so we had a breakout here for Bitcoin, not to the upside. Uh, which would be nicer, but um, yeah, of these rising wedge here, um, I mean, a lot of people and I were talking about an ascending triangle, so that was a little fake out here. So it looks like more than these rising wedge here, and we had a breakout here to the downside. Um, yeah, a pretty big one, so it's a drop of 21% from the top here to the low, so that's not unusual for Bitcoin, but it could it could be that this was the drop we needed for another rise here, um, a big shakeout here because 7.6 billion in crypto long positions liquidated in one hour as Bitcoin blanches to 52,000 US dollars. So that's a huge number. I haven't seen any big number like this before in this liquidation. Yeah, and when you think, okay, my portfolio is is crap, I'm down minus 30, minus 40%. I mean, these people here, they they were trading on margin trading here with a leverage of 10x or more. Maybe even 5x leverage were liquidated, so they're down to zero. So all their cryptos are gone, which they had this in this trade, it's it's 100% loss. So that's why I don't um, do leverage trading, um, because yeah, the whales, they get the numbers from uh, and they know exactly um, how much do they have to push uh, the price down um, to get all these uh, li uh, longs liquidated? And yeah, that's really a huge number, 7.6 billion within one hour. So yeah, please be very careful with this. I mean, um, yeah, when you buy Bitcoin or you hodl or you buy these stocks, I mean, they cannot be liquidated. They can go down, but uh, they can go also up. But when you do leverage trading, you're liquidated. It's completely gone. So what do we have here? We had this big drop here, but a very nice recovery here. And we are right now close to 56,000. So often we get something like a double bottom or so. So maybe that's it here. So these one, two, three formation, one, two, and three. So maybe this was the double bottom here we get. Maybe we go down again here and we test a little bit, but um, I think uh, there will be a lot of uh, whales down there to buy these dip. Um, also the RSI here had this break down here. So that's very low. Maybe we go a little bit more down here. Um, I don't know, but um, yeah, um, we're still at 55, 56,000. So Bitcoin is still doing, uh, is still very high uh, in my opinion. Um, let's move on here. So um, yeah, some people said that the huge hash rate drop triggered this Bitcoin sell off. Um, yeah, first of all, a, a, hash, a drop in hash rate does not trigger a sell-off. I mean, uh, this drop in hash rate, we can see it here, that was huge from 220 exahash to 110, so 45, 50% drop here. Um, yeah, the reason for this was that uh, the hash rate of Bitcoin mining pools plummeted in 24 hours and pool fell and so on. The reason is that Northwest China is undergoing a complete blackout for safety inspections. So you can see that the... the the lot of uh, hash rate is located in China. And um, yeah, that's why we had this huge drop here. Um, I'm concerned about this. No, I think it's a temporary issue. Um, I think they will be back um, soon, uh, will be s soon back online. And yeah, they don't sell or something like this. So this should not add any pressure. Some people would argue that the security of the Bitcoin network is dropping when the hash rate drops. Yeah, that's true, but it's still, it was still above 100 exahash. So this is still the biggest uh, computer network in the world um, and the most secure. And yeah, maybe uh, if the blackout lasts longer, I heard that we are already above uh, close to 200 exahash again because this uh, data here is lagging a little bit. So I think this will be soon over. And I, th I don't think uh, this triggers a sell off. Um, I think the whales are using these news to trigger the sell-off. They, they, um, yeah, they say that uh, this is very critical for the network. Then the people start to sell. Then these whales sell too, or or do whatever uh, to push the price down. And then you get this cascade effect, and yeah, um, all these longs were liquidated. So um, the hash rate will be soon up. But um, for our miners, this is, uh, you could say this is very good news. Uh, wait a second, because the next difficulty change right now is estimated at minus 23 to minus 8%. So you can forget these numbers here, this will not happen. 
Um, but uh, because the next retarget is right now in 15 days estimated, you know, usually it's 14 days, but because of this huge drop here, um, we have uh, a lot slower block times right now, on average like 14, 15 minutes right now, usually it's 10 minutes. Um, but um, yeah, this will help to help to hold the difficulty down for another two weeks. Maybe we get a drop in the next adjustment. We will see how fast this here recovers. But for our miners, they're not affected from this they will uh, benefit from this because they will mine more Bitcoin because the competition is smaller when they are offline. So um, good for the miners here on fundamental thing. And another thing which is very good, the transaction fees are going up. You can see here the reward per block here. The base reward here is 6.25 um, Bitcoins per block and uh, 1.76 Bitcoins here in transaction fees. So in the last few weeks, we were a lot below one Bitcoin here, like 0.5 Bitcoins. We are now a lot higher and you can see the reward in the last 24 hours here on the transaction fee side is 209 Bitcoins, which is very high. Okay, the reward in the last 24 hours is low here with 53 million Bitcoins, um, million US dollars. But yeah, the competition is also smaller. So the miners, they are still mining. They are making more money because they get these big transaction fees here. Um, yeah, so the hash rate right now at 120, 130 exa hash. Maybe we'll, we'll be um, back again soon at 160 exa hash or something like this. And you can see the mining profitability which is the most important metric for all the miners um, and for mining investors. And a lot of people forget about this. They're always watching the price and the price is only one, one part of the mining profitability. The most important thing is the mining profitability. And this is at an year high. We can see it here, a Bitcoin mining profitability. So this chart here is not updated. So we will have to make to, to wait tomorrow. So this line is at 37 cents here. And you can see that, um, yeah, 43 is something somewhere like here. So this is, I think, a year high or something like this. Very, very high because of high transaction fees and a low hash rate. Um, so for miners, they are still, mi when you're not in, in these regions in China, this is very, yeah, very good. Um, also for Ethereum, we can see here the mining profitability is going up. We're back at 12 cents per day per mega hash. So that looks very good. So maybe we get another leg up like here. Um, a new phase of high transaction fees, which is not good for the Ethereum network, but good for Ethereum miners. So overall, very good fundamental data here for these miners. Problem is that the most investors don't understand anything about this. They think when Bitcoin drops, um, these miners have to drop. Okay, yes, the holdings of the value of these holdings drop of these Bitcoin miners. That's that's true, but they don't have to sell now. So if you think we're still in a bull market and Bitcoin is going more up because of stock to flow or some other model you follow, um, then these miners are not affected because they don't sell uh, down at the bottom here. So in my opinion, um, yeah, very good um, numbers here for these miners here on the mining side. Yeah, and in the last few weeks, we had very irrational markets. So I want to make an example here with shoes. Um, so you can see these shoes here. Um, so yeah, they look nice, maybe a little bit boring. And um, yeah, maybe they're 200 US dollars. So these were the mining stocks in February when everything was high, everything was crazy. So 200 US dollars, so not cheap. Um, a good price. So that's where we are now. So we have another shoe here, a better shoe. Um, yeah, which is now waterproof. It had wa uh, rubber soles and so on. So you could argue that this shoe here is better than this one. This is just an example. And the price is now 100 US dollars. And what happens now is that people say, oh, maybe these shoes are overvalued. I don't think I buy it or I think I sell it because they are overvalued. But the fun part is it, that they're 50% cheaper than this time. So this is a better shoe. And I think our miners has beca had become better because they have more hash rate online. Um, Bitcoin is higher and so on, more hodl. Um, so our miners are better, mining stocks are better, and the price is at a 50% discount. And now there's some news out there. I saw three news last week about Riot, Argo, and one other company, I forgot, which said, yeah, these companies are very overvalued. Riot should be at four US dollars, which is ridiculous. And also Argo is so overvalued. And yeah, I, I think you understand here my example. Um, when these news say they are overvalued, they are probably undervalued because the whales, they control the media 
and they want to get you out of these stocks. And when do these retail investors sell? Yes, at the bottom, down there, when the, when it's very stupid to sell, in my opinion. Um, nothing, nothing wrong with taking profits, but when the stocks are high, when they're down, you should not sell. You should buy more or you can do what you want. That's what I do. Um, everyone should hear, make your own decisions. But what I do, I buy more and I sell when I think they're overvalued. Um, right now we have this situation, we have a better shoe with a cheaper price and the people are asking me, are these stocks now overvalued? I think this is very irrational what's happening right now, um, but we have this often in these markets. And yeah, I think in a few months these stocks or these shoes will look like this here. So we will have a big rise, I think. Um, yeah, and what I do is... I. Uh, changed my strategy in the last few weeks, not immediately, but for the next leg up and for the next correction, because um, I think um, the biggest part of these investors don't understand. I don't. I think here in this community or in this, uh, my followers, they understand it because they, I talk a lot about the fundamentals, but the overall market is very immature. Um, it doesn't follow any fundamental um, data. Um, it's more about um, greed and fear. When there is greed, they, these stocks will rise like crazy. And when there is fear, they will be sold a lot. So I will trade these stocks more. I will trade these big moves because, um, yeah, we will see this again. The, um, the majority of investors does not understand anything about mining. That's at least what I think here about this. And yeah, we will see how this all plays out. Because the fundamental data is very good. Um, we, here we can see the mining profitability again here. We are here at a high in Bitcoin. Also Ethereum is rising and also Ccash is going up like crazy. So maybe we can go back on the model here. That would be very nice. Um, we can also see here that the operational excellence on the 10 day, 30 day and, and 90 day cross mining margin is up. So um, Hive is basically at the same level as last week, you can say, but HUD8 is a lot higher than last week. Bitfarms is higher, like 50,000 a day. Argo, um, 50,000 more a day. Yeah, Ccash is also very profitable now again. They mine like 0 0.4 Bitcoins with Ccash um, per day. Then we have Maras on the rise, Diggy, DMG and Riot is number one right now here in this. 10 day, 30 day, yeah, 10 day and 30 day gross mining margin. So you can see um, the gross profit for Riot is right now 400,000 a day or close to 400,000. So yeah, they're very, very profitable. I think that's why they have the highest market cap right now. Yeah, we can see here the revenue on the daily side here. So um, yeah, we had Hive um, for a while now, number one. Right now, Riot is here number one. So they are making 500,000 a day approximately. But these others are not far away. Bit Farms, Argo, Hive, Hot8, not far away. Mara is still a little bit down here. I don't know the exact um, hash rate right now, but they will be soon at the same level here. They are not far away. Um, I think we will get an update soon here. Then we have DMG blockchain and DigiHost. Um, yeah, like 70, 80,000 a day. So they're making also a lot of money. Um, yeah, then we have the OPEC 3, um, which is the first indicator of my BMX model, which um, is the metric for the operational excellence. And we can see that Hive was all the way number one, but it's now surpassed from Riot blockchain because Riot has like 1.3 XH in Bitcoin mining. And for Hive blockchain, Ethereum was very profitable and is still very profitable. I think um, Hive can go up again very fast if Ethereum profitability gets a little bit higher. And yeah, Hive needs now a little bit more hash rate in Bitcoin mining and they will get it soon. They have a big plan to ramp up to, to 2.6 exahash at the end of the year. Um, I think in, yeah, it should start in April, the ramp up here. So yeah, that's very exciting here. Also Bitfarms number three, Argo number four. So they're very close here. I think they can surpass Bit, Bitfarms soon uh, because of Zcash, which is now getting again, very profitable. Um, Argo, HUD number five, Mara number six, DMG blockchain number seven, and DigiHost number eight. Yeah, let's go to the HODL excellence. Um, yeah, Mara is the lonesome leader here with like 5,200 Bitcoins on the balance sheet. So they're only growing because Bitcoin is only growing. That was such a good buy in January here for Mara. Then we have HUD8 with like 3,300 Bitcoins or a little bit more. Then we have Riot, uh, 1,600, something like this. Argo, um, Hive blockchain, Argo blockchain, Bitfarms, DMG blockchain, and Digihost. So they're approximately 250 to 300 Bitcoins here. 
yeah, bit farms will be uh, within the next 50 days at 1000 bitcoins, they say, and I think this is possible. Also Argo, um, yeah, should be at that level. Yeah, very exciting here. Then we have the strategic excellence, which is my forward looking indicator up to 180 days, but more focus on the 30 and 90 days. Um, we can see that Mara and Ryan, the US miners, are number one because they disclosed so much hash rate for the upcoming month. And if this indicator would look like 360 days in the future or more, these I think these guys were even more um, away from, from the competitors because they disclosed so much hash rate with all these S19 miners, which is really crazy. Yeah, number three is Hive, number four, HUD, number five, Argo blockchain, Bitfarms, DMG blockchain, and DigiHost. So Bitfarms made a move and increased the hash rate. Um, I think um, they will soon here grow here again, um, but this is a moving average, so it will take a few yeah, days and weeks um, for this to um, move up here. Then we coming to the BMX, the Blonity's Miners Excellence, uh, which measures the, yeah, the absolute um, ranking here for these miners. So we have still Mara number one uh, here in this BMX, more than 1 billion. Um, then we have Riot number two, Hadate number three, Hive number four, Argo number five. So Argo is on the rise here, Bitfarms number six, DMG number seven, and DigiHost number eight. Um, let's go to the BMXI, Blontis Minus Excellence Indicator, which gives us the relative value here, the BMX divided by market cap. So, so it should indicate which is the cheapest one right now. So it's still DigiHost. Um, DigiHost had a better week than the most of the other miners, but um, it's still the cheapest in this model here. Then we have HUD8, DMG Blockchain, Bitfarms, Argo here is on the rise because of the huge price drop. Um, then we have Hive Blockchain, yeah, they need now a little bit more hash rate again, but they will come. And then we have Mara and Riot here, number seven and number eight. But we know that these NASDAQ miners, they play in a different league. We already know this. There's a lot, lot more um, liquidity. So it's possible that they, when, when all these miners have a turnaround, then they um, start faster to rise. But um, yeah, I will judge on this model at the end of the next big leg up um, when I see that uh, the model didn't work. And when we are at the top and DigiHost performed worst, uh, then I will change this model completely, but it's now too early. I will wait for this leg up because right now the markets are completely irrational and yeah, it makes no sense to judge here on this. Um, yeah, you can see the market caps here right now. So we have these miners here, they're all below 1 billion, like HUD, like Bitfarms. I mean, Bitfarms, for example, they with the daily, with the mining margin of today multiplied with 365, um, they would have a, a gross mining margin of 120 million. And the market cap is below 600 million. So this is a PE ratio on the cross profit of five. So this is ridiculous. And this is without the holdings and without a potential Bitcoin increase. So um, yeah, when someone tells me that these companies are all overvalued, I can only laugh about this. So yeah, here you have the numbers of the market caps right now. How many X since BMX version 0.3? So um, we can see that Argo uh, from the last week to this week had a huge drop. It was, yeah, it was way above these others. So yeah, these all these metrics uh, show, showed us that Argo maybe is a little bit due to a, a bigger correction here. Um, yeah, now it happened, but it's still, yeah, 16.8 X up since December. Um, the only miner which performed better, uh, which inc had an increase in the last seven days, was DigiHost. Luckily, this was my BMX leader, uh, BMXI leader, and I increased the position very big. But yeah, overall, it was not a good week for my portfolio. You can see it here; all the stocks dropped. Um, yeah, we'll show you here. So this last week was minus 11%. And only because of DigiHost and I increased very big, yeah, it was not worse. It could have been like minus 20%. And this month is also not successful with minus, minus 16%. You can also see that I sold a lot of K1 and exchanged it into DigiHost because in the short term I saw more potential and I had to do something to save my portfolio a little bit. But I will go back into K1. This is a great company. Um, very soon. But uh, yeah, right now I was seeing this big opportunity in DigiHost. Um, yeah, that's why I increased this position very big. And yeah, the last week was, a, it was a good decision. 
let's move on so it's gonna be rough right there will be 50 percent drops in one day so it was not a 50 percent drop in one day but over the last few weeks we had 50 percent drops in these miners um yeah that's why um i will take profits in the next leg up and will buy the uh and at the bottom at the 50 percent level or something like this this will happen again i think yeah to succeed you need a lot of n nerves and uh yeah not of know-how and nerves of steel so this is no joke this is very difficult and the the thing what you shouldn't do or what i not do is um yeah panic sell at the bottom that's the worst thing you can do uh, in my opinion um yeah let's go to the forecast so i had this last week i have this again i didn't change the numbers here maybe it's a little bit different but overall you can see my income forecast if bitcoin goes to 200 000 us dollars you can see for example had eight with the revaluation of all these bitcoins and so on it would be at 780 million us dollars um yeah the the market cap right now is below is like at 700 million us dollars or even below so it could be that the income uh, of this year is going to be higher than the market cap which is ridiculous um also for all these other companies they are all very undervalued in my opinion um yeah when we go to the cross profit which is without the revaluation of coins you can see the same they are approximately here these three here at 200 million us dollars or so and the cross profit side with the bitcoin increase so yeah they're approximately at 600 to 800 million so that would be a pe ratio of four if you take the cross profit um so which is also very very cheap in my opinion um because here you can see the market caps here yeah okay let's move on um so i have not today the leverage here the potential leverage um if bitcoin goes to 200,000 and we get the hype back and some fundamentals to count so if we are at the pae ratio of 35 so hive could increase like 13 hot 8 at 33 um, bit farms 14 argo 11 um, mara 11 digihost 20 dmg 12 and riot 6 so this is based on the income with the revaluation so with the, this is no financial advice guys and yeah with the gross profit um so without the revaluation of the holdings and yeah you can choose your pe ratio you can also go to five here a p ratio then you will have no gains but i'm yeah choosing like the 50 to 75 here so let's take the 75 because at the end of the bull run usually it's everything going crazy so maybe this one here is a little bit more realistic that hive is 17 hot 8 18 bit farms 19 Argo blockchain like 15, Mara 9, Digihost 23, DMG blockchain 9, and Riot 6. So because of these huge, huge price drops um, in the last week, um, we have here more potential leverage because that didn't change anything on the value of these companies. So guys, all mods are wrong, but some are useful. You already know this. This is very important to understand. Um, this could be completely wrong, but I will touch uh, on this model at the end of this bull run, not from a day to day or week to week thing. Um, I think we have a, a huge way to go. And I think the problem is that the most people cannot imagine uh, what is a really bull run and the end of a bull run is look li looks like. I was there in 2017 and this was completely different to what's happening right now. We can see that the all res exchange reserves are still dropping here so we are here very low it's it's even going down here again so there's no big inflow on the exchange um, also the miners position index so we can see that more and more miners are don't selling so less sell here so we can see we're going down here to even lower levels um, so no pressure for miners here also we can see that the google trends um, yeah they're very very low we can see here there's i can feel no fomo at all right now when i look around me at at, uh, at people they they don't uh, yeah are in crypto they are not in crypto um no one is talking about bitcoin everyone is thinking about lockdown and things like this um yeah but no one is talking about crypto so um the last three bull runs we had this indicator always was rising like 8 to 10x so we had the first here then we had a 10x increase to here to the next bull run in 2013 and then we had a 10x increase to um yeah in 2017 so maybe it's this time not a 10x increase maybe only a 5x increase but it should be not here i mean it's it's close to the bear market levels right now so yeah there are two possibilities maybe we're in the bear market now um 
or we are very, very early in the bull market. You have to decide. I think you know what I'm thinking. Okay, guys. So, um, yeah, very important now to don't get aggressive when your portfolio is down and to blame other people for this and so on. Keep your strategy, stay an investor and not a crazy trader or something like this, which hops every day from one stock to another. Um, you made a decision and you decided for some of these companies because you like this company, you like the numbers. And yeah, it's now about to stick to the strategy and um, yeah, to think like a whale because these whales, they, um, I mean, when they dump the price, their portfolios dump too. Um, because they most of them they have a lot of bitcoins but they don't care about this their only thinking is about how can i get more more of these coins the us dollar value does not they don't care about this and yeah that's what we should do uh, we should not um, get uh, do panic selling i think um, these stocks are very close to the bottom maybe we have seen the bottom in a few of these i mean it's now important that bitcoin holds the line but um, yeah, when we follow the stock to flow model, um, Pantera Capital had a very good forecast. They said one year ago that in last week, the price will be at 63,000 and the price was at 63,000. So that was huge. And that model tells us that in May, it will be at 75,000 approximately. And yeah, the, the month later and so on. And yeah, in August, it's 150,000. So it's the same as uh, plan B stock to flow model. So the numbers are there, the numbers are out there. Um, sometimes it's very difficult, but I always say, um, yeah, not everyone can make a lot of money because it would not work because the money has to come from, from, from other people. They lose money there. So there will be uh, one guy who makes a lot of money and 10 people, they lose money. I want to be the one guy who makes money and that's why I stick to my strategy. I do my investments, I adjust my strategy um, now because um, yeah, I will take a little bit of profits in the next leg up. But um, I have a very strong hodl mentality. I learned it in uh, in the last bear market and yeah, that's it's very difficult to me to, to change this because um, yeah, I was the hodler, no matter what it takes, if Bitcoin goes to 3000 or 10,000, I was only accumulating. But now I think um, I will stick with these companies because I like the fundamental value. That's what I, th what I want to say about um, stick to your strategy. But um, it's nothing wrong to take some profits on a leg up because they will pump huge again and they will drop huge again because the market is not there. A good example is, for example, the Amazon stock. A lot of people say, oh, I, had, I would have bought uh, Amazon at one US dollar or something like this, and now I would be rich. I think a lot of people bought Amazon stock at one US dollar 20 years ago. But um, yeah, then there was a rise to $100, and then they dropped, I think, to four or five US dollars. So I think a lot of people panicked so there and said, oh, never, I never go to internet stocks again. Yeah, now we're at 2,000, 3,000, I don't know. So there are always these times when it's get, when it gets difficult. And if you stick to your plan and you understand the, the potential of such a company, you will not panic sell at the bottom. Okay, guys, so I think that's it for today. Hopefully we get a green week and yeah, see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen.